Hi, I'm Nisende. In this video, I'll explore the concept of predators and prey, both evolving sapiens. If you didn't know, sapiens just means that an animal has intelligence that's comparable to or greater than ours. For example, humans are a real-life sapient species. We're so cool. Anyway, let's set the stage for our two species. All my previous Spec Evo videos have been set on a planet called Origin, but this one will be a little different. These animals are based on some of the first characters I made when I was little, so please forgive me as I attempt to make it make sense in this universe I've created. I promise I'll focus on the speculative evolution aspect of it. So, the planet we're exploring today is called Pan. I don't know, I was 8. It's a massive planet with a relatively uniform landscape, but we're going to focus on a civilization by the southern coast. 20 million years ago, the Pyros were the first species to evolve sapiens on their planet. This video isn't about them though, it's about their pets. Similar to a guinea pig or a hamster, the Pyros had tiny pets they brought around for company. Known as Padogs, they were 10 centimeters long from head to tail. Just to clarify, most of the names in this video are names I came up with when I was about 7 or 8 years old. Here's the final art. Padogs are docile creatures that prefer to sit around and eat what they're given. Their bellies are soft and vulnerable, but it seems that they've evolved to present them when they smell someone new. And this might be because both parties involved in their domestication enjoy belly rubs. Padogs also have big hairless tails which are chock full of nutrients. They evolve glands near their tails that secrete a very bitter oil, probably to discourage from getting eaten. Although they have similarities, these animals are not closely related to animals on Earth. One symptom of this is that they go through a sort of metamorphosis. In the wild, the ancestors of Padogs had simple social groups, with one matriarch as their leader. This form doesn't quite exist naturally in their domestic species, but a Padog will grow twice its expected size if exposed to iodine and given enough food. These large variants are known as queens, though that term isn't really gendered in this context. They're much more aggressive than the normal variant, though they're not exactly dangerous to people due to their size. Their jaws are highly developed and have a relatively high bite force, though they are still herbivores. Wherever the Pyros go, they bring their Padogs. They treat their Padogs well with lots of high quality food, so there's a cunning animal that will always follow. It's considered a nuisance because it gorges itself on any nutrients it can fit in its mouth, regardless of the taste. Here's the final art. They're called animals for the sound they make when they find food. It's a common children's joke to make the sound er, and watch your parents freak out trying to find the source of the noise. Nowadays, it's rare to find someone who actually gets upset at the sound of it, but it's fun to pretend. So there's a chance you might be thinking something along the lines of, this thing is cute, I'd feed it on purpose. I can assure you that there was once a Pyros who thought the same thing, but there's a reason this didn't work out. Once an animal has eaten a sufficient amount of food, which is a lot of food, it digs a hole and pupates underground. At the time, Pyros didn't know that they were the same animal, but they knew enough that when animals abound, another animal will always come next. Emerging from the ground like a traditional zombie, there's a super aggressive animal that seemingly only feeds on blood. Luckily for the Pyros, these monsters are only the size of a small to medium sized dog but their teeth are certainly large enough to be dangerous to a human. Here's the final art. Crazimals are apex carnivores compacted into a tiny death machine. It seems that their favorite food is a plump padog, so I guess they still don't mind the bitter flavor. They feed on blood to nourish their eggs, and they feed on the rest of their prey to nourish themselves. Crazimals unite Pan by being disliked by all, and their name is used as a common insult across the land. Around this time, the Pyros voyaged to their planet's moon. Their planet is called Pam, so naturally their moon is called Pamela. It seems lifeless at first, but a strange phenomenon allows for travel below the planet and back. Think of it like Hollow Earth combined with the depths from Zelda's Tears of the Kingdom. Within Pamela, life is shielded from the harmful radiation of the star they orbit, which allows them to live much longer along with other positive side effects. Think of that like Superman outside his home planet, but not nearly as strong. It's lit up by pools of lava falling from above, so some parts of the planet have eternal day, while others have eternal night. This celestial entity's underground is warm all across, and covered in humid jungle. <laughs> you can tell I tried my best not to use the name for that one. Notably, although Pamela is much smaller than the planet it orbits, the gravity is similarly powerful when underground. This doesn't really make sense, as gravity actually weakens the closer you get to the center of a planet. Whatever. 
Surely this isn't indicative of any deeper lore. Anyway, although there's a ton of life, vertebrates hadn't quite evolved yet. When the Pyros came, they brought Padogs and other domesticated life, but Ernimals eventually found their way on board. Okay, let's fast forward 10 million years to 10 million years ago. The Pyros colony had long since gone extinct, but the animals they brought would live on. As for Padogs, they evolved to grow much bigger with a tough hide to block the fangs of Crazimals. Here's the final art. These ground-dwelling animals are much heavier and stronger than they appear, with lots of muscle mass. They have a fine fur that reminisces of their days as a pet. Did I use reminisce correctly? Other than its texture though, their coat is quite different because of all the recessive traits it was bred to have millions of years ago was quickly replaced by something more efficient. Padog seem to have re-evolved their social groups, including queens. One Padog chosen by the previous queen will grow twice its weight and rule the rest of its group. They seem to be quite smart and will go to great lengths to avoid being attacked by a crazimal. Ernimals haven't changed as much as Padogs, but they have grown longer. They're actually much lighter than before though. There's lots of food in the Pamela underground, but most of it is in the trees. Naturally, Ernimals adapt to get as much food as possible and have evolved for arboreal life. Here's a final art. Ernimals use their light bodies and large surface area to jump from tree to tree. They develop surprisingly good eyesight and can differentiate many different colors while also seeing well at night. Once they've had their fill, they eat into the center of a tree and pupate. Trees aren't the same in Pamela as they are on Earth, though they are similar. They're like trees as they have fruit, but they're a bit more fungal. Aside from a tough calcium-rich covering, the inside of these trees are quite soft and nutritious. Similarly, a pupimal is solid and lifeless on the outside, but there's a lot going on within. When a crazimal has finished its metamorphosis, it will tear through the tree with its sharp fangs and claws. They've gotten a bit bigger over 10 million years, but the main change is the webbing on their fingers and the membrane across their ribs. Their hair also grows much longer. Here's the final art. These crazimals attack from the sky, and rip through the throats of their prey using their sharp teeth combined with the speed of a descent from above. Although they can't fly and can barely even glide, their membranes allow for a fall without injury. At least, not injury to themselves. Five million years later, Pamela's underground climate has changed very little. However, the life within continues to evolve. The dogs have gotten much bigger and have taken to the trees in an attempt to avoid predation. They're very intelligent and could be considered sapient. Here's the final art. Although they're heavy, these padogs use their strong arms to climb on trees. If one falls, they hit the ground harder than the ground hits them and are usually unharmed. They have great hearing and an incredible sense of smell and good eyesight. They still have queens who defend, provide, and rule from the ground. The queens are built huge and are pretty much unkillable once they're fully grown. Most of them live more than 100 years, though they will pass on their title by the time they're 50. An old former queen will lose a lot of weight and live the rest of their life among the other padogs. Ernimals have evolved a membrane across their body and can now glide from tree to tree. They have grown quite intelligent, but their lifestyle is still similar. Here's the final art. Ernimals spend a lot of their time playing, though it makes this larval stage much longer. It seems they don't mind. When they finally grow large enough to pupate, they'll eat into a tree the same way they've been doing for millions of years. If it makes you feel any better, the calcium exoskeleton left behind by these trees will eventually be eaten by a giant snail thing. It's all a part of the circle of life. Anyway, once a crazimal has completed its metamorphosis, it will climb out through the top of the tree and glide down to claim its first life. At this point, crazimals have what we can call a wing. They've gotten quite good at gliding, though they can't yet fly. With a 2 meter wingspan, they're nothing to mess with. Here's the final art. To maneuver through 3D spaces such as the sky it takes a lot of intelligence, not to mention gliding through an obstacle course like a jungle. They jump from the highest places to cut through air itself and into the vital organs of a dog. Once one has gotten a kill, crazimals will gather on the ground to feast. Any crazimals that have already eaten will try to fend off the Padog queen on the ground. They don't always succeed, and certain Padog villages are relatively safe from the crazimals thanks to the good defense of their queen. Fast forwarding another 5 million years to recent times, Padogs haven't changed a whole lot, though they are much more intelligent, and have advanced societies. Although they don't need clothes, many wear accessories to show what they are capable of making, or as something a loved one made for them. Here's the final art. Padogs have a curly mane that can be red, brown, or blonde. 
They walk on all fours but will occasionally balance on their hind legs to hold heavy objects. They are quite large and can defend themselves in trees or on the ground. They can live for a hundred years, though that's not exactly common. Their social lifestyle gives them immunity to most diseases, but there's no such thing as an immunity to razor blade teeth. Anyway, Podogs still have queens. The queens haven't changed much, though they are even larger in comparison to the others than they used to be. They stay on the ground and do their best to punish any crazy moles that try to hurt a Podog. When they're not acting as town security, they gather goods that can't be found in the trees. Ernwolves have grown bigger sensory organs and bigger brains. They could be considered sapient now, the most are too young to do a lot of thinking. They maneuver through the jungle with ease, gliding without a care in the world. Here's the final art. Most Ernwolves will eat to their heart's content, play, eat more, sleep, and repeat, with the intent to metamorphosize. However, growing numbers of them have learned to restrain their transformation with the fear of becoming a monster. This has been happening long enough that a subspecies exists who doesn't metamorphosize. These are called pygmy ornamals and they are able to reproduce without metamorphosis. They are lighter than the average ornamal and can glide even better. They are quite the rare sight, as they are preyed on by crazenals. Just to note, all these animals have done a ton of differentiation in the past 20 million years. This is just one case and it's important because there's an individual on origin. Anyway, back to the average ornamal. They come in grey, brown, or blonde, and their fur is usually highlighted with red or orange. Their thick tails store nutrients and help to balance the ornamal while gliding. When it's ready to metamorphosize, an ornamal does what it always has and eats through a tree. Pupimals are solid on the outside but basically liquid on the inside. The only elements of an ornamal that stays during its metamorphosis are its ears, which help to distinguish where it is on its way to becoming a crazimal. Once they're ready, a crazimal will climb to the top of a tree to spread its wings and fly. Speaking of the crazimals, they're also considered sapient at this point. Their fashion tends to look like everyone went to a bowling tournament in the 1920s. Their cultures in general have a heavy emphasis on morality, at least on the outside. Most view Padogs as mindless beasts, but this seems to be the fault of misinformation spread by crazimal leaders known as the Darlings of Oblivion. Perhaps crazimals simply don't want to believe their main food source has thoughts and feelings. Here's the final art. As crazimals grow more intelligent, they tend to prefer play more than they prefer killing padogs. This doesn't mean they don't like killing padogs. Their sharp teeth allow them to tear up soft meat, but crazimals only weigh about 15 kilograms on average. How are they going to kill a modern padog? Now, if you've watched my Sapient Dragons video, you might have noticed that I haven't brought up magic in this video yet. Well, as crazimals grew more intelligent, they ran into the problem of not having hands for object manipulation. I've been able to solve this problem with magic. I know it's silly, but that's kind of what I'm about. Crazimals can do symbol telekinesis, but have also developed their psychic power for one of their favorite pastimes, killing Padogs. They employ their abilities to weaken the mind and body of their prey and kill them while they're weak. We've been talking for a while now, but you might be wondering, how do we know these animals exist? We're explorers on a planet called Origin, so how did we get halfway across the galaxy to Pam? Well, less than a hundred years ago, something happened that still can't be explained. Two populations of animals from the moon called Pamela were inexplicably teleported to Origin. I've been able to tell this story using the research they've done on their own history. Of course, these populations are one of Crazimals and one of Padogs. It seems that it's not the whole population on their planet, just in one area. They've made their homes in origin and they're already beginning to evolve. Padogs, for one, have adapted to living in the savanna, which is of similar warmth to what they were used to. However, there aren't any trees that can carry their weight, so we can see that they're already getting used to standing upright more often and running faster. The lower gravity in origin helps with this as well. Now that everyone's on the ground, the dogs are also developing closer relationships with their queens, and learning that they're more than just big guardian tanks. However, it seems that Padogs got the short end of the stick. Crazimals have benefited greatly from the move to origin, mostly thanks to the lower gravity. It seems that their psychic power can move much heavier objects than before, including the Crazimals themselves. They don't even need to flap their wings to fly anymore. They've mostly been keeping to themselves, but something tells me they're up to no good. Today's Darling of Oblivion is Septimus Severus VI. 
Even his name is overkill, but he's not really as evil as he looks. The real menace is his son, who's on the brink of metamorphosis. He's only 7 years old, but he's really giving main villain in the sequel. I just don't like the way he's looking at me. Anyway, the Darling of Oblivion has an uncomfortable amount of power for one person, as they supposedly have the god-given right to rule all life in the galaxy. That's never gone wrong before, right? Well, uh, that's about it for this video. I hope you didn't mind the silly names or goofy lore I tried to make sense out of. This was one of the most fun videos to make, and I definitely intend to make more. The next Spec Evo video I make will be one about dragons, except what if they were insects? I hope to see you then, and thanks for watching!